that tiny little upgrade, I guess upgrade, finishing touch uh, feels amazing. We've been living with these cabinets now for a couple of months. If you haven't seen the video series where we build these cabinets from scratch, I mean scratch. Uh, it's an amazing series, it was a lot of fun. Uh, before that we didn't have any cabinets, we just had a utility sink right here against kind of a bare wall. So this was a huge life upgrade for us. We've been living with them now for a couple of months and honestly, we can't even imagine what life was like before them. So I'm not really sure what we were doing before, but we made it work. And uh, this has just been amazing, guys. The sink is working beautifully. If you've been following our channel for a while, um, you know that was a big decision point for us was whether we go with a deeper sink or not. Uh, the deep sink was a great idea. The countertop, for those who watch those videos, it's fantastic. The epoxy was great. Um, we have had no issues with it. We've been touching it up with wax about once a week or so, something like that, and it's been wonderful. So today we wanted to share with you guys a little upgrade that we did to these cabinets. We had actually, maybe, maybe I should back up for just a second and kind of explain how the design of these cabinets changed at the last minute. So this space for us is our primary cooking and food prep area right now. But in the long run, it's actually gonna be kind of a laundry area. So we've been trying to keep both of those realities uh, in mind with the design. There's only five feet of cabinet space here. And so therefore, space is a super premium. We had originally wanted to put a garbage can in this base cabinet here that you would pull out and potentially put a cutting board or something above that. But as we started working on the design, it became really obvious that we needed more drawer space. So unfortunately, the trash can over here got totally nixed in the favor of some drawers. And I'm super glad we did that. It was a really wise decision. You architects, interior designer people out there, you know these struggles. And trying to convince a client of these things, I'm sure, is not a lot of fun. Uh, we're the one of those people, but thankfully we're to blame for our own design mistakes. The decision to nix that was a good idea. The problem is, now where do you put the trash can? So we've had the trash can over here kind of by the washer and dryer, but it takes up floor space and it's kind of awkward. And we don't like having to dribble things as you go from the sink to the trash. So we had purchased originally some hardware to make this into a sliding drawer where the trash can would hide. But because we nixed it, well, we just had the hardware laying around. Now that we've been living with the cabinets for a little while and kind of working through them, I got to asking myself, what if the hardware that we were gonna use on those drawers there could be used somewhere else and we could make a drawer that would hold a trash can? So I'm gonna let you guys look at this for just a second and see if you can figure out which one of these is the trash can now. All right, while you guys are working on your guesses, we thought we would share this because we feel like this is a really cool mod, especially for somebody maybe who purchased a house and wants just a little bit more utility. These under sink, under cabinet, trash, bin, recycle, compost things are becoming more and more common. I think something that our subscribers and our people on social media kept yelling at us while we were designing these cabinets was drawers, not doors. And I'm glad you guys did that that because it really made me stop and rethink what we were doing. For example, these drawers right here are a full 10 inch deep and they're a full depth drawer slide. So this slides all the way out. Look at all that junk that's in that drawer. We got a full crock pot, a full Vitamix blender, and it all fits in that drawer nice and tidy. And we don't have to climb into the back of that cabinet to fish that out. Same thing with the bottom. We can pull that all the way out Got a nice, beautiful rolling pin, a full salad spinner, and everything fits nice. These are deep drawers. No, I did not find a speck anywhere on the internet. I literally just measured everything that we had in our kitchen, and I kind of went off of that and made a ballpark guess, and it worked out so far. All right, you've had a minute to think about it. Make your guesses, and I'm gonna get Alyssa to give me a hand. Do, 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 do. What do you think, this one? Maybe, that could be, that'd, be, that'd be a weird trash can, but it's possible. This one? Well, I kind of already showed them that one, so. This one? I've kind of screwed this up, because I just realized I kind of showed them like half the drawers anyway, so. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> this one, ready? Bum, ba, ba. What? Okay, just for comparison, here's what the door looks like. Look at that. And here's the door. We did talk about 
switching this handle to like right here. Yeah. Because it's, you know, if someone comes to our house for the first time, they're probably not going to know this is a drawer, but we thought that'd be kind of weird. Or we thought we might do a redundant handle later, but for now, yeah. Jesse and I know that this pulls open. But to be honest, I actually open this most of the time with my knee. So correct me if I'm wrong, we do have, we did have the option of just making this a drawer, but you yep. wanted the hardware where you could push it closed like that, and yep. you could open it with your knee. So instead of pulling it, you can go like that. And yep. we thought, some of these things you can't tell if they're gimmicky or if they're actually a really good idea. And we thought yep. there's those times your hands covered in chicken or God knows what, you know, we have like a large project going on and you really don't want to open this and get it all messy. You just want to use your knee. Yep. And I didn't think I was going to like it. And it turns out I love it. I use the knee more often than not just because my hands seem to never be free. So there's a couple of ways to achieve this general idea. Let's say you have a set of cabinets where you can't turn the face of the cabinet into the drawer like we've done on this side. Another thing you could do is build a drawer that pulls out like this. I think the downside is that in case of a trash can, it's not really hands free. There's also no rule saying you can't customize your drawer to be exactly what you want. So for example, we are super into composting and by making our compost accessible, we find that we use it a lot more. We would never be able to do this without the drawer because our trash can would be so far back there that it's simply not usable. When you're building your own kitchen from scratch, whether it's you or someone's building it for you, you gotta think about the things that really make your life easier that you simply aren't gonna get when you just buy a standard track home or go to Home Depot and buy their pre-built cabinets. So we really thought through our workflow in this particular kitchen, what we wanted to store in the drawers and the cabinets. And we really took time to think about what can we do to just make our life easier. Most people buy houses that already have the kitchen done, but the cool thing is that there are things you could do to make your kitchen a little more functional. And that's why this door to drawer really excites us because we feel it's changed our life. I mean, it's the little things that make your day just that much better and whether you just bought a home or you've been living in the same house for 20 years it's something you could do in a weekend project all right so the question is how do you do this type of a project well there's a lot of different types of cabinets out there so you're gonna have to make a judgment call and kind of do some research on the type of cabinets that you have these are what are called inset doors and they have a face frame around them. And so they're called an inset face frame cabinet. And so that's what you're looking at here. Now there are cabinets where the door will actually overlay the frame. So there'll be a framed cabinet, but the, the door actually covers that frame up. That can still work, um, but you have to do some fitment testing uh, with your drawer design. So once you kind of figure all that out, you'll want to make sure that you measure uh, the width of the potential drawer. The hardware that's underneath this thing, which I'll show you in just a second, um, is actually based on the width of your door opening. And they do offer a few different versions. Um, I think we have a 12 inch, and I think this door is about 12 inches on the dot. So it's pretty tight. Um, so you want to make sure to do your measurements and follow the instructions from the company. So the really cool thing about this whole design is it actually completely mirrors the design of our our drawers so let me just show you a drawer really quick and it'll help you understand what we're looking at with this cabinet so this is a set of slides and these slides are actually mounted to the cabinet box and you can see that they're full depth so these slides disappear obviously into the back of the cabinet and underneath this drawer is just a couple of pieces of hardware. Basically, there's a couple of latches, and then there's just a couple of holes that are actually in the back of the drawer. And what you can do is set this drawer into the slide, if it's not too full. Push it in, and it locks into those slides. That's exactly how this works as well. So essentially, this is just a drawer. So if you can just use your imagination, that's all it is is a drawer. But we're using a door front to complete the drawer. So inside here, we have our trash can and we have our compost, which Alyssa showed you guys. And all I did was basically built a drawer that fits what we have. Um, you can actually buy these completely done. So when you go to buy the hardware to do this, look around, you'll find done for you drawers. You'll have to do a little bit of DIY though. If you want to use your cabinet door, which I would assume you do, to finish this, you might have to do a little bit of carpentry to make that happen. So underneath this door or this drawer, 
is actually the exact same hardware. So these are just the quick locks that go on the underside and this is what clicks the rails in. And then on the back side, there's just a couple of holes that actually pair to these little notches in the back. And this is just one continuous slide. So let's take a closer look at the hardware that's underneath the sink. So there's kind of this base. This is actually all one piece. You can't remove this, but there's actually two separate rails here, which is really similar to the way these doors are designed. But what's different is that there's a little connecting bar that goes between the two, and it kind of makes this really rigid square. We had to put a block underneath this to raise it up so that it doesn't hit the face frame that's sticking up right here. So this whole assembly basically creates the carriage that your drawer that's gonna hold your trash can is going to sit on. Since we're looking at this hardware, I'll talk about this device right here. So this is an accessory to this trash can system. This is called Blue Motion, and what it does is it actually captures the energy from the soft close. So this is a soft close system, and so when you slam the door, it closes nice and soft. The mechanism that's inside that little accessory actually has a spring or something that actually captures the energy from the soft close. So that when Alyssa pushes on the door with her knee, it releases a spring in there and it causes the door to open just slightly. It doesn't have enough force to actually jettison the door open, but it's enough that you don't have to open the door with your fingers and then you can get to the trash can nice and tidy. The width on this is extremely important. The edge Edge of this system is right on the edge of this face frame and the other edge you want to make sure it doesn't hit the other door you can see that this is pretty tight in here and that's because we didn't originally plan on putting this in this cabinet but it just so happens that it works so make sure you do lots of measuring there's lots of details on Bloom's website and if you take your time you should be able to find a piece of hardware that should work nice and smooth so let's talk a little bit about the drawer so again, I just built this drawer from material that we had laying around. It's a basic drawer built with pocket joinery, which is how we built all the drawers for our cabinets. And I had to use all the same uh, recesses and everything that uh, Bloom requires for our drawers. So it just worked out that this was really easy for me to put together. But if you're not really a woodworker or a DIYer, what you're gonna to wanna to do is buy one of these things that's already made. And again, just make sure that it fits your hardware and make sure that it fits your cabinet. I'm not really sure, I can't remember how they create this situation, but this is what we did. Instead of putting a very short front on the cabinet box like this, we just put an extended front and that allowed us to attach the door that we originally had on the cabinet to the drawer. We did that very carefully with just a, uh, four screws and then we actually had to buy new screws for the door handle because these screws actually go through the face frame here or the door and therefore we had to actually buy longer screws to make this all work. As we mentioned earlier, you could put this type of a drawer system and you could leave the door installed. It's very likely in a lot of cabinets you could do that. Uh, but in this case, we chose to just remove the hinges and we remove the hinge plates to make sure that there was adequate clear clearance there. So in this case, the door is actually acting just like a door front, if you can imagine that. Probably the hardest part for me was getting the uh, drawer front lined up in the cabinet so that everything looked right. So what I did was I over-drilled the holes where I attached the door front to the box itself. Same thing with the handle screws. And that gave me just enough fudge room in here to make sure that everything lined up nicely. So lastly, we wanna give full disclosure and that's for plumbing. There's gonna be some challenges for you, most likely with your plumbing, depending on the type of sink and how deep your trap is and all that stuff. So the way our, our cabinet works here is everything has to be pretty much on the left side of the drawer here so that it clears the plumbing. It just worked out that the way our plumbing is in the wall, we actually have a 45 into the waist there and it all works out. But if everything gets a little too far to the right, starts bashing into the sink and of course over time that could cause a lot of problems so uh, as part of this conversation we feel like it's good to just do full disclosure and say make sure to take the time to understand your plumbing and how this is all going to relate to that you may end up having to move your trap or do some sort of modification to your sink in order to make something like this work
So far, having the trash can in really close proximity to the sink has worked out super good. Also, the espresso maker being close by with our compost, uh, we're much more likely to put the grounds into the compost bin than into the trash. And I can say this has drastically reduced the messiness of moving across the kitchen. So if you happen to be in one of those kitchens where uh, you have to move across the floor to get to the trash can, which is pretty common, oddly, uh, or like Alyssa said, if you've got one of those trash cans that's buried underneath the sink, this could be a super refreshing improvement. Another thing that I learned from researching this system is that there actually are standardized trash cans. And some of the drawers that you'll find that are set up for this actually have three different bins in them. So look for that. Uh, one will be say trash, uh, compost, and recycle, or maybe two different kinds of recycle like paper or plastic, things like that. So you can find systems that are already designed. The problem for us with that system was that this cabinet is not wide enough. See, we originally designed around this cabinet, which is only about four inches wider, and that's just enough, uh, excuse me, it's two inches wider, which is just enough to actually accommodate um, those original waste bins. The nice thing about those types of systems is that if your, your waste bin gets disgusting or it's damaged or broken or something like that, you can always get a new one. We unfortunately kind of built around a trash can that we had laying around, so if this one ever gives up the ghost, um, I guess we'll have to just scramble and try to find something that fits or modify or build a new drawer. I think these systems, including the drawer and all the accessories that you're gonna need to make the slides work and mounting hardware, you're probably looking at around $300. The hardware itself is a big part of that expense, probably in the $150 range. But believe it or not, they really get you for these wooden door uh, set systems, which makes sense because it's done for you and everything should work together. So if you wanted to, you could definitely build your own drawer. Uh, if you don't want to, you might be able to find something you can just buy that will do it all. So on the topic of research, I guess I should uh, mention this. So the reason that I was just installing this today is that our original plan for this got kiboshed. You see, the sink that we installed is actually a really big sink for this size of base cabinet. And so what happened was all the hardware that we had originally purchased to make this drawer front a tip out front with this beautiful stainless steel tray, well, it didn't fit. We tried three different companies, three different sets of hardware, and there wasn't enough room back here for that hardware. So unfortunately, this thing's just gonna be a false door front. And then I was having a really hard time figuring out how to get it to stay in there. And I think we're onto something with the magnets, although I think we're gonna have to do something maybe to keep it aligned because someone called this a trouser something or other because it always catches on your pocket. And I think that if you've had these type of handles, you probably have shared that experience. So unfortunately, we lost out on this beautiful stainless steel tray underneath here that was designed to tip out and store the sponge and you know the things that you don't wanna put on the counter and you don't wanna leave in the sink. I'm not really ready to give up on the idea of having a place to store our sponge though. And we have these little organizer trays laying around and they look like they're perfect for this type of use. And I got to looking at this door and I realized that it would be really easy to mount one of these here and then it would be nothing to you know, stick the sponge or something in from the sink. So I think we'll go ahead and do that. It's not what we originally planned on, but I think it'll do the job just fine. And of course, if we don't like it, we can always take it away. Thank you. 